the UK in many ways, due to DeepMind, due to some of the real AI prowess, has thought about the way in which you need to oversee this, the ethics involved, had government relationships, academics as well, such as yourself. And when it, ultimately this all stems, our exuberance, our interest around ChatGPT, at the heart of it at the moment, are, we, are you worried or excited? Can you balance, the, is one more than the other? Typical, uh, typical academic answer. Hello, and thank you for inviting me on tonight. It's fine. Um, it's both. It, it, Chat GPT has shown people who don't understand anything about AI what the possibilities are and what the potentially negative consequences are. So yeah. I think it's opened a lot of people's eyes to what the issues are around the AI that we, you know, many of us have been talking about for a number of years. And we have to get governments to think about how best to regulate this new, very fast emerging industry. Ultimately, that review that you published back in 2017, has it turned mm. into anything tangible? Do you, I have to say the UK political situation has been, well, tumultuous at best, but has there been any movements towards ensuring there is the right overseeing? Well, yes. We actually are about to produce um, a regulation paper. A white paper will be coming out in this, well, this this spring um, from the Office for AI, which all happened, that was created as a result of the review we did in 2017. I'm on the AI Council, which was created as a result of the review 2017. We've had a lot of money put into AI for a, you know, a small country our size. We hit way above our weight in AI. Mm -hmm. We can't ever be Google or Stanford or MIT. But, you know, we we, um, we have fantastic universities doing amazing and training. We put a lot of money into training people for this new industry. And the AI regulation papers, I said, is due out this, this quarter, which will be the the government's, the UK government's take on how we begin to regulate AI. Um, it will be different to the EU Act. Um, we won't go to statutory law straight away, and it will be sector-based as well to start with. Um, it, because this, we have, but it's all very early. You know, we've just chat GTP has shown people the complexity of what you've got to regulate, and it's not just about what governments do; it's what industry does itself. Mm. Uh, it's very interesting to hear the news from Google because I imagine their open AI is quite a threat to Google, and I imagine they're restructuring big time in the they want different types of people because they're going to have to take that open ai threat very seriously and of course it's microsoft that's backing yes. open ai now uh, a very interesting uh, ai wars coming up between the tech companies um, and of course, the UK and Europe, the, the, we don't want all uh, everything happening outside of our countries. You know, we have all sorts of the issues which would be, um, we need to worry about data sovereignty, sovereignty. we need to worry about digital IDs. Um, yes. You know, there's so many things to think about. Well, Wendy, I wanted to ask you about that point, because essentially what the current tools do, if you think about ChatGPT or DALI, is they take existing content, text or commands, in, in the case of ChatGPT, images in yes. the case of DALI. I don't know if you saw it, but there was a deep dive by my colleagues at Bloomberg Law about the first US copyright lawsuit. Yes. And I guess the inference is how does that limit what you can put in to the language models it in order to get something out? What, what's your reaction piece. to that? That piece that your your team sent me about an hour ago, it's fascinating because we're going to see a lot more of those types of legal challenges. Because if you take Chat GPT, it is effectively effectively trained on any text that is available on the internet. So that's anything that you get from Google, from Wikipedia, from anything people have put up on their own sites, and Dali the same with images. Um, now with it, what it shows us is that these AI tools at the moment ca don't create, right? They copy, they predict, uh, they very cleverly merge ideas, integrate ideas semantically, which is one of the things I've been interested in. They don't create. Right. So I think it's right. absolutely, I mean, you think about the effect on the music industry, which has had a lot of bashing from technology generally anyway, let alone the poets. I mean, lots of people have got ChatGPT to write poetry. Well, a lot of that is based on styles of poetry that, that ChatGPT has yes. been trained on and the internet. And the other thing to, to remember also with things like ChatGPT and DALI, they are, DALI, they are 
very, very, very expensive to run. They have huge supercomputers and, and uh, that, that produce this, um, you know, do the, the uh, looking over the internet, do the you know, harvesting of the information on the internet and doing the natural language processing and all the work they have to do. This won't stay free forever. It can't do it cannot stay free forever. And the really interesting thing, yes. I think ChatGPT, they were very clever because they've probably driven the price of the company up with that. Does that make any sense to you? Mm. So uh, Microsoft is looking to invest money into it. And I, you know, I sort of like to say, there was a time when Microsoft was the bad guy and all this. But I trust Microsoft to be careful with what they're doing. They're mm. investing huge amounts of money.